Hello, welcome to John B. The RD, the research desk. Today, we're going to be talking about how to start a jewelry business. There's a great amount of opportunity in selling jewelry online, but it can also be highly competitive. Major existing brands dominate with bigger ad budgets, a large social media following, and established brand recognition, which makes it hard for small emerging jewelry businesses to keep up. However, Online global jewelry sales are expected to grow by 11% by 2021. The rise of direct-to-consumer DTC brands has led to new jewelry businesses popping up and winning market share over traditional brick-and-mortar jewelry stores. While it may seem daunting to start your own jewelry business in a competitive market, if you follow the right steps to building a brand that offers something unique for online shoppers, you'll be on your way toward great success. In this, po in this video, we'll discuss everything you need to know and how to start growing your online jewelry business. Finding your niche, the three types of jewelry you can sell. Since the jewelry and accessory market is highly competitive, you'll first have to identify a niche or specialty by offering a product that is hard to find and doesn't already exist. A great example of a successful DTC jewelry brand is Ocean & Co., which sells high-quality, eco-friendly jewelry and donates a portion of sales to organizations dedicated to reducing ocean pollution. Their jewelry line aligns with a purpose that draws in a Pacific audience based on values. There are several different ways to make your jewelry product stand out. You can sell jewelry for a Pacific audience, and that's designed for a Pacific purpose, weddings, proms, theme parties, etc. When it comes to selling a jewelry line, or when it comes to starting a jewelry line, there are endless possibilities here. The most common types of jewelry brands. One, custom jewelry. Custom jewelry, also known as fashion jewelry, is meant for everyday use. Unlike jewelry, custom jewelry uses low cost and imitation materials like synthetic diamonds, wood, plastic, brass, copper, and other metals. A single piece of custom jewelry should be priced affordably, anywhere between $1 to $100. A great example is Bobber Bar, one of the biggest online brands for affordable jewelry. For affordable jewelry, excuse me. They first launched the brand by focusing on affordable jewelry pieces. Once they establish a reputation, they expanded their product line by offering higher-end luxury pieces. If you're thinking of selling custom jewelry, make sure you create a product pricing strategy that's affordable, or you'll miss out on a lot of potential customers. Two, fine jewelry. Fine jewelry is made out of precious metals and gemstones like gold, silver, platinum, and diamonds, and rubies, and is often oftentimes associated with luxury lifestyle. These types of jewelry products are stylish, high quality, and are usually won, worn over special occasions. For instance, Brilliant Earth is a fine jewelry brand that offers vintage-inspired engagement and wedding ring. Unlike going to a jewelry store and picking out a ring as is, Brilliant Earth offers an innovative online shopping experience by allowing shoppers to fully customize their ring, the type of metal, gemstones, shape, etc. Fine jewelry products can range from $100 to $3,000 per item, sometimes even more, depending on the type of materials used, size, sourcing, and brand reputation. 3. Handmade Jewelry The popularity for online marketplaces like Etsy has shown that customers are willing to purchase handmade jewelry in other handmade products. While handmade jewelry can't be, a mass can't be mass produced, it's a, very, it's a viable option for business owners who want to make and sell unique jewelry or custom pieces. Although marketplaces like Etsy, Etsy offer a great opportunity for jewelry artists to sell their custom work and build a following, it can be highly competitive unless you are willing to play the role of the jewelry designer and a marketer to attract Etsy shoppers to your store.
It's also hard to scale if you are making each piece yourself or if the jewelry is made to order. A snapshot of the jewelry market. Although highly competitive, there is a great opportunity in building a jewelry brand. Here are some statistics that illustrate the current state of the online jewelry market. One, jewelry industry market size. The jewelry industry is expected to reach $480 billion by 2025. China, the United States, and countries throughout Europe are all great markets for jewelry. However, newly industrialized countries are expected to make up a large portion of the jewelry sales as their per capita income continues to rise. Two, specialty jewelers continue to rise. Specialty jewelers generate more than 43% of the industry's total U.S.-based sales. Finding a unique space in a jewelry marketplace will help, stand, help you stand out from the, from the competition. Three. Fine jewelry still has a presence in traditional retail. Fashion jewelry will continue to sell better than fine jewelry in e-commerce by 10%. While purchasing online, shoppers are more willing to buy jewelry at an affordable price rather than paying $1,000 for a piece of jewelry since it is hard to make a big purchase online without trying it on first. So how to start your jewelry business in 10 steps? If you're looking to start a jewelry business online, you've come to the right video. Be below. One, pick your niche and target market. Before you make your jewelry business idea a reality, make sure that it's a viable target market first, preferably one that isn't oversaturated. When customers start their search online for jewelry, they often have an idea in mind of what they're looking for already. So always consider the types of cus customer you want to attract and make sure you understand what they're looking for. Understanding your ideal customer can help you improve your return on ad spending, ROAS, with better targeting to ultimately help you spend less and attract more sales. Two, study the competition. Once you know the type of jewelry you want to sell and the audience you want to attract, it's time to look into the competition. Research their pricing, offers, social media channels, and social commerce strategy, review, reviews, and press coverage to find out how you can gain a competitive advantage. You'll want to note on what competitors are doing so that you can look for ways to further differentiate your product. Let's say your competitor sells custom jewelry for teens, but their negative reviews mention how quickly the item breaks. With that information, you may decide on prompting how your custom jewelry product lasts longer or an offer an extended return policy. Another potential competitive advantage is to look for is delivery speeds. As shipping can build customer loyalty, most online shoppers want their products delivered within two days. If you're looking to offer two days shipping and compete with jewelry brands that sell on Amazon, you might want to consider partnering with a third party logistics 3PL provider like ShipBob. Three, develop a business plan. Whether you are self-financed or getting financed from a bank or family e-commerce venture capital or a fund, you'll need a detailed business plan with the business plan in place, you can calculate the number of products you need to manufacture and your path to profitability. A business plan also makes you look more legitimate to financiers and makes a great first impression in convincing them to invest in you. Four, choose a creative name with an available domain. Take the time to come up with a creative name that aligns with your brand's mission and purpose. Your business name is important as it is going to be unique enough to customers to remember and not to abstract that people don't understand the type of product you sell. You also want to check out the U.S. Trademark Office to make sure that the business entity can be trademarked or isn't currently trademarked. Even if the name is available, you'll want to check website domain availability, which you can do on website domain and hosting sites like GoDaddy.com. 
five. Design a product line. If you are getting into jewelry because it's your passion, this is an easy part. There are so many great places to find inspiration, like your favorite jewelry designers, latest trends, and more. Once you have your products designed, you need to figure out how to handle product production and acquiring supplies in bulk. Six, choose to outsource manufacturing and suppliers or not. Once you have designed concepts for your jewelry line, you'll want to research the potential manufacturers and decide whether or not you want to produce products locally or overseas. If you choose to go with overseas, make sure that you keep your English basic as possible. If you're hand, hand making your designs, you'll need to purchase jewelry, making tools and equipment. It can be beneficial to also ask other jewelry designers about trustworthy wholesale distributors or look into getting a reseller license so you can forego paying local sales tax when you buy in bulk. Seven, device a unique brand aesthetic. Designing a brand identity will make your custom packaging and marketing materials stand out, which all plays into creating a remarkable unboxing experience. Find a great custom packaging company to partner with, like Noli Su, spelled N-O-I-S-S-U-E, or Pack Lane to help make your package stand out. Don't forget about your website. It's also worth hiring a graphic designer to help create a logo and other branding materials for a consistent brand look and feel. Eight, develop a marketing strategy. Finding potential customers to get your first sale is a challenge for any new jewelry business. Target your marketing towards the demographics most likely to purchase. As you focus on building a customer base, use the research you compiled, including insight on competition. To develop a multi-channel marketing strategy, you should incorporate as many channels as possible, including social media. Customers love to research products and reviews before making a decision. On social media posts, you can highlight what makes your brand different. For example, if you focus on the sustainability, then post about your products are good for the environment and add related tags to your post. Can your jewelry be one doing exercises? Post images and videos of people working out while wearing your jewelry. Email marketing. Contrary to popular belief, email marketing isn't dead. Growing an email list is one of the best ways to keep your brand on top of mind and improve customer retention. But beware, sending too many emails to customers can exhaust your list and lead to a high rate of unsubscribers. So be sure to follow email marketing best practices. SMS marketing. Although it's still in its infancy, SMS e-commerce marketing is a rapidly growing channel for online businesses. With open rates as high as 95%, you can essentially guarantee that everyone on your SMS subscriber list will see your messages and promotions. Paid advertising either Google, Facebook, and Instagram. Many of the largest DTC e-commerce businesses today grew from ad campaigns on channels like Facebook, Instagram, and Google Ads. Ad costs continue to rise, but they can still be a viable channel for jewelry, for jewelers. <laughs> if you want to run ads, spend time optimizing your audience targeting so that your ads are served to people who are most likely to buy. And choose your channels wisely. What channels perform best for other brands might not work best for your brand. Search Engine Optimization, SEO. Free traffic is the best traffic, with so many online businesses relying on social media ads to make sales. Ad costs are continuing to rise. With a good SEO strategy, your product listings, blog posts, videos, guides, and other types of own content can show up at the top of the search results and get more traffic without increasing your ad spending.
to give an example of why SEO is valuable, Ocean and Co. ranks as the first result for sea turtle bracelet. As seen above, this is a search term that averages around 700 searches a month and, com and convoys users' intent, which helps attract more traffic to the Pacific product for free. When looking for the right keywords to attract organic traffic, use, use tools like Google Ads or Moz to find keywords that have a high search volume with low competition. 9. Build your online store with an e-commerce platform. Building an e-commerce website is easier than ever due to the numerous e-commerce platforms and apps and integration available. E-commerce platforms are designed to make setting up an online store as seamless as possible. Some of the most popular e-commerce platforms include Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, Squarespace. An alternative to building your own website is to create a store on Etsy, but it's more suited for handmade jewelry and make to order items. And since it's a marketplace, it's harder to get exposure and traffic to your Etsy store. Plus, Etsy gets the credit for the sales as people won't necessarily remember your brand, just that they bought on Etsy. 10. Find a fulfillment solution. As you start out, you'll probably need to store inventory in your home and sell fulfill orders. This might work at first, but as you grow your business, you'll eventually need to rethink your fulfillment strategy. Once you reach a point when it's hard to keep up with packaging and shipping orders on time, you'll want to consider outsourcing fulfillment to a 3PL so you can focus more on your time and energy on other parts of your business. Fulfilling orders without lifting a finger with ship Bob. Scalability. As your jewelry business grows, hiring the right people with logistics and warehousing Expertise is a time-consuming process. Finding warehouse space is expensive and can take a while for you to get up and running. With ShiftBob, you get access to an entire fulfillment center network. Their technology and their operations infrastructure. Amazon made two-day shipping the norm and many Small businesses don't have the resources to support two-day shipping, which can lead to a high cart abandonment rate. With ShipBob, jewelry brands can offer affordable two-day shipping to help compete with shipping options like Amazon Premium Shipping. ShipBob looked, looked into opening your own e-commerce warehouse and hiring employees but couldn't come close with what 3PLs charge for picking, packing, and shipping. They would also be worried about scheduling fulfillment shifts, boarding boxes, and shipping labels, and de dealing with the extra headache of running logistics. The order volume has seen ebbs and flows, and ShipBob has fulfilled over 10,000 shipments per month for you. With Black Friday or Cyber Monday and other summer seasons being their most in-demand time of the year, <clears throat> inventory and order management technology. ShipBob's platform comes with built-in order and inventory management software. Get accurate inventory counts, reorder points, notifications, easily create bundles, and more. They rolled out new products and designs on their website one, three times a month and send new inventory to ShipBob each week. It's really easy to create new SKUs and restock existing ones using ShipBob's technology, which is especially important with high inventory turnover. Data and analytics. ShipBob's free analytic tools give you the data needed to run a successful 
the jewelry businesses online by offering full visibility into the entire procurement process. Get real-time data and fulfillment performance, transit times, shipping costs, inventory forecasts, and much more. Conclusion, starting a new jewelry business is an exciting end developer, and it's never been easier to start a successful business online, but that doesn't mean it comes with challenge. It doesn't come with challenges. As you grow your jewelry business, you might find it hard to keep up with fulfilling a high volume of orders. If you've reached this point of your growth, it might be time to outsource e-commerce e fulfillment. So let's get into the list of equipment that you would need to buy for your jewelry business. You will need pliers, chain nose, parallel, round nose, side cutters, etc. Magnifying visors, also called optivision, visual ring clamps, basal pusher, burnish, basal roller for setting stones. Number two, cut half round jeweler file. I recommend the Valor B brand. Good quality needle files. Saw frame, saw blades, Number four blades are a good all-round blade and beeswax. Rawhide or nylon hammers, a variety of steel hammers, metal stamps, and carrot stamps. You will need a jeweler's bench, jewel, bench peg, steel block for hammering metal and metal stamping. <clears throat> Jewelers metal snips, ring men rail for making rings to size and measure existing rings, ring gauges for measuring fingers for ring size. You will need a vernier calipers, absolutely crucial for precise measurements. You will need a metal ruler. Scribe, compass, dividers for layout, design, and measuring. Torch. We recommend the Orchid Torch for beginners. I use both the Orchid Torch and the Smith Little Torch for goldsmithing. Pickle and Pickle Pot. An old slow cooker for coffee pre-collator percolator is perfect for a pickle pot. The reason for the pickle pot is so that you can clean your jewelry. Flux or borax, copper tongs to be used in pickle pot. Non abestos soldering board and charcoal block. A third hand, titanium solder pick, solder. Hard, medium, and easy. Heat proof soldering tweezers for locking on to and regularly picking up small pieces of hot metal. A PPE, safe, safety glasses, apron, and earmuffs. Micro motor and accessories for drilling, polishing metals, etc. Oh, and also for the PPE, safety glasses, apron, and earmuffs. I would also advise that you get some like a face mask, something to keep you from breathing in chemicals, as you will have flying debris sometimes. Polishing compounds. Try and get the silica free ones. Dust, dust mask for polishing and grinding, as mentioned sandpaper and em emery paper and a range of grits from 600 to 2,500 grits. 
I'm sure I have got most of the essential list above, but with time and experience, you will discover the best way of working with what tools you prefer to use. If you're working at home and you're making your own workshop, I'd also advise to use casting. And for, for casting, you also need a 3D printer for a wax printer. So now you can cast your jewelry. It really makes the process a whole lot simpler and it will save you time. So I hope you liked this video and if you did, please be sure to give a like, share, and subscribe. If you know someone who's interested, feel free to share it with them. And until next time,